What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hyundai Baseball Channel. Continuing 30 clubs in 30 days. And sooner or later, we had to do it. So let's just do it right now and talk about the Baltimore Orioles, who, whether you remember or not, they were actually decent for a little bit of time in 2020. They were in a little bit of a wild card hunt there for a while. Um, they didn't finish in last place like everyone thought, including myself. And the O's, uh, they eventually finished 25 and 35. Showed significant progress and talent within the organization. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of moves to compete this season or to seriously improve the team immediately. Instead, they're continuing to build that farm system for the future through trades. They sent Alex Cobb to the Angels for a prospect. They're hoping that young talent like Adley Rutschman, like Heston Kerstad, will come along at the right time, which is not this year probably, but they will come along very soon. And that's when the Orioles hope to be ready to compete. Nevertheless, they've had made some interesting signings and some moves like the great Felix Hernandez. He will be in camp on a minor league deal. And reportedly, one of the main reasons he signed that deal was because he wants to continue to make his Hall of Fame case. He wants to make that case a little stronger. And uh, that might sound to some kind of a selfish reason, but it's actually a realistic move when you're a guy with over 2,500 career strikeouts, six All-Stars, a Cy Young, but only 169 career wins. He hasn't been great for a while. He's only 34, though. So, you know, could get a little closer to that 200 win number and could get more consideration. So it actually makes sense from his point of view. And obviously, you know, once you're there in camp with a team, you definitely want to help that team win. So his velocity is not what it used to be. He's going to be trying to pitch smarter, work in the corners, working and breaking stuff, and see if he can somehow you know, put together a decent season and improve his Hall of Fame credentials. So definitely going to be rooting for King Felix. But the O's also signed Matt Harvey to a minor league deal who rose to fame with the Mets, and he was an elite all-star talent at one time. But his last productive year was 2018 with the Reds. Since then, he pitched poorly for the Angels in 2019. Then he pitched poorly for the Royals in 2020. Then you got Wade LeBlanc re-signed on a minor league deal after an 8.06 ERA and eight starts last season. He was also on a minor league deal for 2020, made the team then. He'll try to do the same this year. And just a recognizable name, I saw Dustin Knight, a former Giants prospect who had a nice minor league career, but he never got a shot in San Francisco despite a 26-11 and career minor league record, 3.06 ERA, and 10.2 strikeout per nine ratio. I have no idea why the Giants never liked him, but uh, he had a great minor league career, and I think he has great stuff, and I saw him pitch with the River Cats. Don't know what's going on there, but he'll be in Orioles camp. Other than that, the only serious major league signing was actually Freddie Galvis. And Freddie Galvis has struggled offensively for the past couple years, but he has a great glove. He got some power. He's hit 20 home runs before. And, uh, you know, he's not going to be a massive difference maker. He's not going to go bring the Orioles a world championship. At least they signed someone relatively young, in their prime, and a big league talent. So that is pretty much it for the additions. Let's get to that starting lineup for the Orioles in 2021. And we're talking about Austin Hayes, a solid defender, great arm, decent bat, but it lacks power. It would be nice if he had a little more pop in that bat. He can run fast. He can run like the wind despite just two stolen bases in 2020. Then you got DJ Stewart, a guy who does have power. He hit seven bombs in just 88 at bats last year. That's a pretty insane pace. Although the problem is he only had 10 other hits that weren't home runs. He knows how to work a walk. He had a 355 on base despite just hitting 193. Next, we got Anthony Santander. And, you know, he never has played 100 games in a season. He's still looking for that first full year. I believe he's got 30 plus home run power if he can get it in. Trey Mancini is going to be back. He beat cancer. He's going to be back in that lineup. He hit 35 bombs in 2019 with a 291 average, 364 on base. Seriously, great looking big league talent right here. And I'm hoping he has a massive year and maybe can hit 40 home runs for this Orioles team. Then you got Chance Cisco, low average, high on base type. He can work the walk, but he doesn't have much power. And you might also see Pedro Severino in there against lefties because Cisco is a lefty and Severino's a righty. So you could see a little bit of a platoon there. But neither one is going to offer a whole lot offensively. They're just kind of keeping that position warm for Adley Rutschman, who was absolutely ridiculous at Oregon State. And I'm talking about hitting over 400 with power 
multiple seasons. Um, this is definitely the biggest catching prospect in the game, and I can't wait to see what he can do whenever he gets to the big leagues. But Ryan Mountcastle was fantastic in his rookie year with a 333 average, five home runs in 126 at bats. He could definitely be a 300 hitter at least over a full season with at least 25 home runs. Freddie Galvis brings a nice glove and some pop, like I said, to shortstop. Rio Ruiz had just a 286 on base last season, and he struggles with breaking stuff. His defense, it's questionable, but at times he does make some spectacular plays over there at third base. So he is definitely, you know, decent, but not a long-term solution at third base. And then you got some guys on the bench like Richie Martin, Pat Vileka, another guy. I mean, solid infield options for some depth, but they're not, you know, going to be, you know, game changers. They don't have a ton of upside but then you got Yomir Sanchez, a glove first guy, gold glove winner. And, you know, he's not going to be great offensively over the long haul, but he was 5 for 16 with a home run last year for the White Sox. I should also mention Orioles fans might notice the absence of Chris Davis. I mean, I just don't think that he's going to be anything valuable anymore. Uh, I know in all due respect to a guy who could hit 53 home runs in a season, but uh, he just can't hit anymore. But, uh, you know, obviously if a miracle happens, if he shows up, he figures something out, he, he gets his swing back. I mean, obviously, he's still there as far as I know, so there's that. But then um, that's about it. Cedric Mullins on the bench, quick, speed, great defender, but he's not going to bring much with the bat. So, you know, it's a very, you know, I wouldn't say light-hitting lineup because there are, there is some threats, some power threats with Stewart, Mancini, Mountcastle. So, I mean, power might be their best, you know, their best asset in this lineup, but it does feel like, despite that, that it just lacks thump as far as the one through nine goes when compared to some of the other teams in this league. But, you know, you have some good patient hitters who can get on base, and, you know, it's going to be a lot better. It could definitely use some of these prospects who are coming through the system. But, uh, I mean, decent middle of the order. Other than that, eh, not, not that great. I'm going to give this lineup a C-. Jumping into the rotation, you got John Means, 27 years old, great in 2019. And last season, he was all right, but he doubled his home run rate, his allowed home run rate, and he increased his ERA. But it was a relatively small sample with the shortened season, and he also did show an increase in velocity and an increase in strikeout ratio. I think he's going to be just fine. I think John Means is one guy I'm not too worried about, and I think he's going to be just good, you know, fantastic for the Orioles uh, over the long haul. But uh, that's the only guarantee, and no one's truly a guarantee, but that's the guy I'm most confident in. We'll say that. After that, you got Keegan Aiken. I mean, he's a young future talent on this team that should be about ready for a full big league season. Struck out 35 and 26, but he has to improve his efficiency and his control so that he can be more consistent over more innings. But the stuff is there, and he could definitely be in line for a breakthrough season. Dean Kramer, he was one of the returns back in that Manny Machado Dodgers deal, and uh, he is a similar guy. Great strikeout stuff, but control his control problems are even more serious. He walked 12 in just 18 innings last season, but he did show gradual improvement in that walk rate in the minor leagues over his minor league career. So maybe it's just a question of settling in, gaining some confidence against big league hitters. Jorge Lopez, uh, someone I've never really understood why he's hanging around because he's just never been good in the big leagues. I know he used to be a pretty big prospect, but he's got a career 9-17 and record with an ERA over 6. So unless he shows some you know, insane improvement, he's not going to be very good. And from this point forward, I mean, each of these guys that I'm talking about could end up in the bullpen or not on the team at all. And you got LeBlanc, you got Hernandez, you got Harvey, all on minor league deals, all big league veterans fighting for a spot in the rotation. They all got to prove that they're not washed up. And I think most people think they are. So they have a lot to prove that they can still get it done out there. Uh, Bruce Zimmerman could get a crack at the rotation. He's a nice prospect. In 2019, he threw two shutouts and had a 3.21 ERA and 24 minor league starts. All that said, this rotation is definitely iffy at best. It could have a decent ceiling if guys like Keegan Aiken and Dean Kramer are able to step it up and have big seasons. It could be similar to the Marlins in 2020 where those you know three young pitchers just came out and had great seasons, and the, suddenly the Marlins were in the playoffs. But even if this happens for the Orioles, the four and five spots are iffy. I mean, you got you know one or more of the veterans that I talked about has to stay healthy and effective throughout pretty much an entire season, and you need a prospect like Zimmerman to step it up. There's just a lot that has to go right for this rotation to be consistently good against the competition they're going to be facing. So I am very doubtful that this rotation is going to be strong enough in 2021 i'm gonna give it a d plus finally the bullpen and you got first round pick hunter harvey great name 
But unfortunately, he has not been able to stay healthy to be able to prove what he can do. It took him forever to get through the minor leagues. Finally made it to the bigs in 2019. It looked good in six innings. And then last year, eight and two thirds, he allowed a couple home runs, a couple walks, hit by pitch, 4.15 ERA. But he's got that 97 heat. He's got good breaking stuff. But he has to be able to stay healthy and stay out there and not get labeled as injury prone. So that's an issue. And then Tanner Scott, another decent option. Hard fastball, nasty slider, just a few control issues. But I definitely like Tanner Scott. Um, then Cesar Valdez, who is a blast from the past back in 2010 with the um, Diamondbacks way back when. And he has been just bouncing around. You know, he's a serious journeyman. I mean, he's in the Mexican League and, and just all over. And uh, they saw what he was doing over there in the Mexican League, and the Orioles grabbed him, and he's got a sick changeup, and he had a nice season for them last year. I don't know if he'll be able to maintain that over a full season, but, hey, he's got decent stuff. We'll see what he can do. Dylan Tate, fourth overall pick, never showed enough to convince a team to make him a starter, but he ended up in the bullpen. He pitched well last year for the Orioles, so we'll see what he can do. And then they got... Probably my favorite option, Paul Fry out of that bullpen. A solid lefty, filthy last season, 29 strikeouts and 22 innings. Other than that, just a lot of youngsters developing, trying to prove that they belong, but they lack consistency. They lack convincing sample sizes. There's a lack of a definite shutdown closer, unless you count Hunter Harvey, who can he has to prove he can stay healthy and on the field, and he really has to prove what he can do at the big league level. He hasn't really pitched enough innings to, to say, yeah, this guy's a legit closer. We don't really know. So overall, I'm not super impressed with this bullpen. Even though there are some, some decent options, they'll hold a few games, but they're going to blow more than a few as well. So I'm going to give this bullpen a D, only because I like Paul Fry and Tanner Scott. But other than that, a lot of question marks in this bullpen. And, you know, not trying to come hard on the Orioles. I do think they got a ton of talent in the system. They're going to get more draft picks if they finish in last place or whatever. And they will be a lot better very soon. I just don't think 2021 is their year. So they're just rebuilding. And I don't think this team is going to be that great in 21. The bullpen lacks reliable options. The rotation is shaky. The lineup is the best part of this team. But it needs some upgrades too. So there's enough talent and upside. Where if everything comes together, they could hang in there like they did in 2020. But I think over the long haul, the difference in talent between in this team and teams like the Jays and the Yankees and the Rays is going to you're going to see that in the standings. So, I'm giving this team a D plus for the current team, not the entire system, just the current major league roster going into 2021, but uh, look out for the Orioles in the next 2 or 3 years. So, that is my Orioles preview if you're an Orioles fan, hopefully you're not too pissed at me. I'm pretty sure that, you know, you you, you know, your Orioles fans are smart baseball people. They they know that uh, this is rebuilding time right now and that this team is not that great at the moment. But your time is coming. Your time is coming. So you guys have a fantastic day. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button. And we're going to talk to you next time. See ya. When the Giants come to town, it's fine.